interest for today in the Aerospace Medicine Vestibular Research Laboratory. My name is Jan Stepanek, and my colleague and co-director of the lab here is Dr. Savet. We're going to talk to you briefly about the work that we're doing here in this laboratory. We specialize in the arenas of altitude protection, acceleration protection, and spatial disorientation. We've had the good fortune over the last five years to have in excess of 25 grants from the federal government and the Department of Defense. Most recently in areas that are going to take us to the human centrifuge at uh, the Brooks City Base area of the Air Force where we are going to be investigating ways to enhance anti-G protection by measuring central pressures. The technology that we use for that is one that is clinically available and is radial tonometry. It allows for the measurement of blood pressure at the level of the um, arm and then a pulse pressure curve measurement at the level of the radial artery and through a fast Fourier transformation then back calculation to the central pressures. We found that that is a very useful tool to measure the efficacy of the anti-G straining maneuver because the central pressures is the base of the column of blood upon which cerebral perfusion pressure stands, especially when you're under G-forces. Mayo Clinic has a long-standing history in the realm of G-protection going all the way back to World War II and um, Dr. Wood, so this is really well-treaded water for our institution and you know, we're privileged to be able to work in the same realm again. The second area that we do work in and that we're privileged and um, have uh, the good fortune to work with our colleagues at ASU with is an ASU seat grant that we've just garnished this, garnered the last uh, year and that entails the quantification of hypoxic incapacitation by virtue of eye tracking patterns and visual fixation patterns that we analyze with the help of Dr. Pradhan from the Center for Ubiquitous Computing. And the other area of uh, significant emphasis is spatial disorientation and orientation. And that is the area of special expertise for my dear colleague and friend, Dr. Savet. So, Mike, your turn. I'll, I'll introduce you to a little bit of what we do and uh, how we got started. And initially, we had a request from the Department of Defense of whether or not we could have somebody sit in a position and feel like they're turning 360 degrees when they were stable. The reason for that was that they had helicopter pilots in simulation of rotor failure and although the visual field would move they didn't get the vestibular input with the head turning. So our work over the last few years has dealt with galvanic vestibular stimulation and in doing so we put electrodes on the head and create small amounts of electrical current that in fact create the sensation or perception of head turning. Um, this over a period of time through our work, we developed a dose response to find out how much electrical current, in fact, induces a perception, both in terms of pitch, roll, and yaw. Our most recent study that we're working on now is to integrate the electrical stimulation along with the visual field to mitigate simulator sickness. This is a problem that occurs if one is in a simulator for a period of time, that mismatch between what an individual sees in front of them and what their head is doing will ultimately create a type of motion sickness. With our system we can create a virtual head motion which is locked to the movement of the visual field. Whether it moves from side to side or up or down, we can create a virtual movement of the head in that same um, situation. Our first test showed that we could mitigate this type of motion sickness by 67 percent. Now we're doing more work to see if we can do more than that. We also have uh, had a discovery within our laboratory using the galvanic vestibular stimulation. We realized that we could time lock that electrical stimulus and record an average response from the vestibular system. This has led us to believe that we now have a new um, sensory evoke potential which we uh, may be able to use for diagnostic purposes. So it's an exciting period of time in our lab. Uh, we have a lot of uh, great team with a lot of help and look forward to future developments. Acceleration protection is important and we chose the areas of emphasis in our laboratory based on what still kills pilots and that has not changed since World War II. When you go into uh, severe turns with a high-performance aircraft, so as you fly a turn, 
the forces of gravity force the blood from your brain into your lower extremities. As a result of that, there is lack of blood flow to the brain, and the way to counteract that is either with the anti-G straining maneuver, which is the most efficacious, or with a G suit. And the purpose of the work that we're doing is trying to assess the efficacy with which we can train pilots such that they can do this training not just in a human centrifuge or in an aircraft, but in a laboratory and be have a good transfer of that training from the laboratory and from essentially the classroom to the operational environment such that they're well protected and they don't black out. You can imagine if you're blacking out in a fighter aircraft going at a very high rate of speed and the nose of the aircraft is pointing in the wrong direction, that can certainly have bad outcomes. The second aspect of um, our activities pertaining to high altitude protection again hails back to the problems of incapacitation in aircraft very famously in you know, the recent years, the Payne Stewart accident where people were incapacitated by lack of oxygen and this was unbeknownst to them. It's a very common problem in aviation and happens on a regular basis, luckily not very often, but if you're in high threat scenarios at very high altitudes, be that in military or civilian operations, it is important to have early warning signs. Incapacitation and just measurement of oxygen saturation is not enough. We're looking hence at performance metrics that would give us yet earlier warning and looking at what the tracking patterns of the visual fixation and scan paths in the cockpit look like is a really good way to pursue that. It is never normal for a pilot to just stare a hole into um, space. They always move their um, eyesight in order to scan the horizon, scan the instruments, and hence trying to establish, you know, are they scanning normally and be able to do so just with a camera looking at the pilot would be a very useful tool to give them early warning and prevent that bad impact. It is always wonderful when you get to go to work, have fun, and be able to discover new things that turn out to be very basic and with every new discovery you open up a whole door of new questions. So we're very blessed to have a great team, um, to have a lot of meaningful um, research questions to work on, and we're looking forward to the opportunity to carry on the tradition of Mayo in this context and also further the lab with more work in the future.